Uh, we start with the greeting of peace. I greet you all with the greeting of peace. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First off, thank you all for coming to tonight's event. Uh, thank you, Mr. Al-Amr, for being here uh, to give this talk. Um, just a group, we're going to get started because we don't have much time. Our PowerPoint presentation, most of this PowerPoint presentation, is about an hour and 30 minutes. And after the PowerPoint presentation, we'll have pizza for everyone. And during the pizza, we'll have a question and answer session. Um, just a bit about Mustafa before we start. Uh, he graduated from UCI in 2003. He majored in computer science. Um, he's now pursuing his Islamic education in the Institute of Islamic Studies in Shinto, Shenyang, France. Um, just a few things before, a few notes before we start. Um, in fact, I request everyone to mute their cell phones so we don't have any disruptions. We're going to be recording um, audio and video. So if you'd like a transcript of the event, um, you can contact us at msu-uci.com. Um, please don't make, again, since we're, re since we're video recording and also audio recording, please don't make noise, no tech theaters, please. Is that what I'm And uh, yeah, so we'll get started right now. Is that what I'm saying? Um, Religion is irrational and unscientific. So before we continue today, 
if you don't mind, I just want to get a survey of approximately where people fall. So if you could just raise your hands and you know, be honest, don't be ashamed or anything. How many of you fall into the religious category? You could raise your hand. Okay. How, how many fall into the theistic category? Okay. Uh, the agnostic category. Okay. And the atheistic category. Okay. So we got, a, we got people from every group here. Okay. Very good. So if you take a survey of beliefs, if you look at the world's population, which is 6.5 billion approximately, the majority of people, and this is surprising to many people, because many people don't even know who the top three uh, beliefs are in the world, and the majority of people are there's 2.1 billion Christians, there's 1.5 billion Muslims, and there's 1 billion agnostic, non-religious, secular, the other titles you can give them, but they fall into that category. Uh, this actually doesn't count for atheists, particularly, uh, because they're not considered to be under the category of agnostic, non-religious, and secular, according to the statistics where these are from. So that's the majority of people uh, in the world and where their beliefs fall. Now, if you look at every single belief system that was mentioned out of the top three, generally ascribed to a founder. Okay. Now, you have Jesus, you have Muhammad, and you have Charles Darwin. Now, not necessarily everyone follows Charles Darwin. Every secular person necessarily follows Charles Darwin. But they take them as a leader. Now you might be wondering, you know, why didn't you show the picture of Jesus? Well, the, the reason I didn't do that uh, is because the actual pictures, there was no actual uh, artwork or picture that was taken of him during his lifetime. So everything is, you know, somewhat uh, substantial. But some people actually claim that, you know, Jesus doesn't look the, the way he does in the pictures. You know, so it's better we just put this anonymous logo just for the sake of uh, objectivity. Now, the two models that present themselves from these major religions, there are two major models. One is that of creation, and one is of evolution. Whereas the models that Jesus and Muhammad came with, in the religions of Christianity and Islam, as well as Judaism, they fall under would be the model of creation. And whereas the model that Darwin comes along with would be the model of evolution. Now you might be wondering, say, why is this a Venn diagram? Where is this overlap coming? Overlap coming is in that fact that the majority of people who belong to these, the creation, they also believe in the concept of microevolution. So both sides, they have something in common. And that's the belief in what's microevolution. And we're going to explain what that is uh, shortly. So there's two opposing models that explain life. So the first model is how do you explain nature? How do you explain the world around you? What's the worldview? Is that there's design with the designer, i.e. God. And the second model says that there's nature is designed without a designer, i.e. natural forces, or you can say mother nature, or you can give it whatever title you want. So if this, this, whatever title you want to describe, these are the two major models that are there in explaining life and how a worldview uh, takes place in the minds of people. The first one is nature equals design without, with a designer. So what, what these people are saying is that the natural explanation Okay, for all the amazing things you see around you, all the complexity and all the design that we're observing in nature is that it was consciously and it was deliberately designed and created by a power that possesses the ability to create such a remarkably complex and efficient living thing. Right? And they say, furthermore, not only do we take this stance, but we say that to attribute all this, all that we see in the world to blind forces of nature is nothing but irrationality. So they take a very strong stance on this side and they negate the, other, the stance on the other side. Now, how do they come up with this idea? One of, one of the ways that they explain is they say, look, you know, it, it's a natural inference. They believe it to be a natural inference. They say, if you look at, for example, a cell, look at the complexity of a human cell or, or a cell of any living being, and you see that it has a nucleus, it has proteins, it has, uh, this is a plant cell, but it has, uh, you know, uh, all different sorts of things there, all different parts. And you say, this is so complex, how could it have come about by chance? It must have been designed. And they look at a microchip, for example, and they say the same thing. They say, look, it's a natural inference where there's a microchip, there's a transistor, there's a computer, something extremely complex. They say, how can you say, you wouldn't say that the microchip just, uh, you know, some silicon spilled and some metal spilled together and it suddenly formed this, uh, suddenly formed this uh, extremely complex device. Nobody would make that claim. Right? So they say the same thing with the nature that we see around us. All the complexity, all the things that we see, not just in the self, but in everything. Extreme complexity, ex there's a sense of design in it, and therefore there must indicate a designer. Now, the second view is that nature, nature is designed without a designer. 
So there is no designer, there is no design in nature, and the apparent design that we see, the apparent complexity that we're seeing in the world, it can be explained without having to resort to believing in God. We don't need to resort to believing in God and it can still be explained and it can be shown that it's possible, or some people will even say that it's probable, that it came into being by chance coincidence. So there's no need to attribute it to a creator, there's no need to attribute it to a designer, but instead we can explain it that it is possible, or some people will say that it is probable that it came about by chance coincidence. Now, the question arises, is how could it be explained? How could it be explained? It can be explained intellectually or rationally by Darwin's theory of evolution. Now, what are the topics to be covered? Now we're getting into the, the subject at hand. And that's, that is the theory of evolution. What are the topics to be covered? First of all, history of the origin of the theory. How did the theory of evolution come about?